Hi, I'm Jesse Thomas, and today I'm going to be analyzing John Hughes' filmography and discussing his signature style. For this project, I analyzed three films that were directed by him and three more that were written and produced by him. Some other films also might be mentioned at times that were either just produced by him or just written by him. Okay, let's start out with some recurring themes throughout Hughes' filmography. Class conflict is a major theme that pops up in Pretty in Pink, Some Kind of Wonderful, and The Breakfast Club. The protagonist is usually lower middle class and their love interest and bullies are upper class. So this will create some sort of us versus them mentality and conflict between the characters. Teenage and childhood angst pops up in almost every single John Hughes film. All of the ones that I analyze have it. This is the staple that tells you you are watching a John Hughes movie. The kids are dramatic, really emotional. Uh, the main conflict is typically emo emotional turmoil, with the exception of Home Alone and possibly Ferris Bueller. But I would argue that um, emotional turmoil is a minor theme in probably both of those movies. Stereotyping and being misunderstood that's also heavily featured in Pretty in Pink, Breakfast Club, Some Kind of Wonderful, Sixteen Candles. The protagonist is typically misunderstood by their peers, their parents, or their love interests. Um, and the adults, especially, are never able to understand these kids. They, they always seem lousy or neglectful or um, mean, the adults do. Um, something like that. Teen romance. Yeah, that's also in almost every John Hughes movie except Home Alone. Fear of growing up is another theme that pops up quite frequently. Uh, the main character or the side character will usually have a struggle with growing up and graduating high school. The characters will express their desire not to become like their parents or they'll have a disinterest in college and pursuing traditional adulthood. Um, rebellion, now this is a very big theme for John Hughes movies. Um, pops up in every single one of the ones that I analyzed. And the characters will be rebelling against parents, teachers, authority figures, conventions that hold them back, like stereotypes or social class, something. They always have, you know, something that they're rebelling against that makes them different and interesting. A pretty dark theme that doesn't really get discussed much when you talk about John Hughes is depression and suicide. And this actually pops up in The Breakfast Club, Some Kind of Wonderful, 16 Candles, and Ferris Peeler's Day Off. So it's a pretty common theme for him, despite not being discussed very much. And that's because it's not an explicit theme in these movies. It's pretty implicit. And you really only pick up on it by, um, you know, reading between the lines in the dialogue or paying attention to the character's actions. For instance, Brian in The Breakfast Club, the reason that he was in detention was for bringing a flare gun to school. And it was implied that he had the intention to commit suicide. But, you know, no one ever really handled that appropriately in The Breakfast Club. That was just kind of brushed over. In Some Kind of Wonderful, the film opened with Keith walking on the train tracks towards an oncoming train. And in Sixteen Candles, Sam talks about how it's physically impossible for her to be happy. And in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Cameron mentioned that he has been wishing that he was dead. So that's probably the most explicit reference to suicide that you'll get in a John Hughes movie. Neglect is also another pretty dark theme for um, John Hughes. It pops up in one, two, three, four movies. Um, the neglected kids are Watt, Sam, Kevin, and Bender. An argument could also be made for Andy in Pretty in Pink. She technically had a father figure in her dad who she lived with, but she practically raised herself and she also took care of her dad. I mean, she cooked for him. She woke him up and got him dressed and, you know, pestered him about getting a job and going to job interviews. And I think she, like, did all of his laundry. So she was, she was really like an adult taking care of herself. Um, sibling conflict, this happens in several John Hughes movies with Sam and Jenny, Keith and Laura, Kevin and Buzz, and Ferris and Jeannie. They all have some sort of um, conflict with each other. 
Okay. Um, moving on to um, John Hughes's style. So all of the analyzed films could be considered realism, except there's something different about John Hughes's movies that makes them sort of unrealistic at times. And I think it's because of how idolized they are and how um, dramatized they can be. Um, he really liked creating fairy tale-esque plots that, you know, they would deal with those heavy recurring themes that we talked about earlier, like depression and suicide. But at the end of the day, everyone ended up happy you know, the, and they got everything that they wanted. The girl, the guy, in Ferris Bueller's case, the perfect day, you know, it all ended so happy and just perfectly and kind of in the way that real life doesn't. And so I think his style could be called magical realism for the way that it's realistic and it deals with these real life problems in these real life settings, but it's in this very idealized manner. Okay, so now we'll look into some visual motifs of John Hughes. One technique, or one technique, I guess you could call it, that he used was a freeze ending. And this I noticed happened in 16 Candles, Ferris Bueller, and Breakfast Club. But I know that it also happens in three more of his movies that I didn't analyze. And it's when the last shot of the film freezes as the credits begin to roll. So he would um, zoom in on the characters in the last shot, in the last frame, and then like freeze that frame and just have you staring there at that one shot and then the credits will begin to roll. And it's really dramatic, which is perfect for his movies, you know. He also um, did this a couple times, an extreme close up of eyes locking. And so this ended up being like this really strong parallel between Ferris Bueller's Day Off characters and um, planes, trains, and automobile characters. And I'll show an example of that in a minute. He also repetitively used the montage. And this happens over and over and over again in all of his movies. But famously, it happened in 16 Candles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and The Breakfast Club. And I'll also show an example of that in a moment. Okay, so also the lighting in Hughes' films. He typically used really bright lighting, um, which that works out appropriately for him because like I said earlier, he has these really idealized lighthearted movies that always end up very happy. And um, bright lighting is usually used for those types of films and comedic films like Ferris Bueller and Home Alone but he would use some low key lighting in like romantic and sad scenes to kind of set the tone, the ambiance type stuff. Okay, so I'll show um, just a few seconds of this um, famous montage scene from The Breakfast Club. And this is probably one of the most famous scenes um, in any John Hughes movie. So here's that um, freeze ending example that I was talking about. Um, this is a really famous shot right here from 16 Candles, which was, um, I think, the earliest film of the ones that I'm analyzing. And they lean in to do this kiss, and it's super dramatic and emotional. And you've got this really low key lighting for, you know, to add to the ambiance. And then the shot like zooms in and just freezes right here and then the credits will roll. So, you know, kind of cool. And here's that example of that extreme close-up of the character's eyes locking together. Nice little parallel there between those two movies. Okay, 
moving on to some um, sound and audio motifs in uh, John Hughes's movies. He really loved music. And that's what I found out when studying him. He spent a lot of time um, crafting soundtracks. And one thing that he's really known for is playing a song loudly over a scene to draw attention to it. And you could kind of pick up on that in that montage example from earlier. Um, there's no dialogue at all for a really long time. A really extended amount of time in that movie where they're just dancing to, and there's a different song that they were dancing to before that and still no dialogue. And he really wants you to pay attention to the lyrics because in um, several of his movies, he would have songs written uh, for specific scenes. Like Don't You Forget About Me in The Breakfast Club was written specifically for that movie. And so he really wants you to pay attention to the song as it plays over a scene. And so he'll play it super loudly. So you will pick up on it. And as for the language and the dialogue, it's a teenage movie. So they're gonna be speaking like teenagers. So he has them speaking so dramatically and full of just exaggeration and sarcasm. And one cool thing that John Hughes would do was he would just make up slang terms that nobody used, not even in the 80s. Um, like here in Pretty in Pink, there's this um, quote, I think it's from Ducky who said this. I might be wrong. This is a really volcanic ensemble you're wearing. I don't know if I said that right, but I mean, nobody speaks like that. Not now, not back then. He would just come up with his own crazy stuff. And um, some other just exaggerations that typical teenagers would do. Like, would you guys please hurry up? I'm breaking like 30 major laws here. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, another thing that he would do would he would use non-diegetic dialogue, which is basically like breaking the fourth wall, which happens pretty often in his movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Pretty Pink, Home Alone, 16 Candles, and Weird Science. He would usually use this for comedic effect. So suddenly the, the characters just turn and look to the screen and tell a joke to the audience. So here's, I'll just play this um, short clip from the very beginning of Ferris Bueller. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? My ninth sick day this semester. It's getting pretty tough coming up with new illnesses. If I go pretend I'm probably gonna have to bark up a lot. So I better make this one count. The key to faking out the current is the clammy hands. It's a good non-specific symptom. I'm a big believer in it. Super funny. Okay, and so here's this ending scene of the Breakfast Club when Don't You Forget About Me plays. And this is a song that he had written for the movie. And so pay attention to how loud this plays and also the lyrics and how they pertain to the movie. Okay, 
So John Hughes also frequently collaborated with the same people throughout his movies. He would cast the same actors in like over and over again, so much that some of his actors became known for being in John Hughes movies. And, um, and if they appeared in different movies that weren't affiliated with him at all, those movies would be mistaken for a John Hughes movie. And that happened with St. Elmo's Fire for sure because um, they featured some of these same actors um, called the Brat Pack. And the Brat Pack consisted of Anthony Michael Hall, Molly Ringwald, and um, Ali Sheedy. And um, so they starred in many of his movies. And Molly Ringwald was considered Hughes' muse at the time. But John Hughes is actually the guy, or the person who starred in the most Hughes movies. He had major roles in um, three movies. Yeah, three movies. And then minor roles in Home Alone and National Lampoon's Vacation. He also frequently collaborated with the same directors, um, Howard Dutch, Wes Mayfield, and Chris Columbus all worked with him um, multiple times. So he, he was very consistent with the stuff that he did. Okay, so here's some visual parallels from a couple of Hughes's movies. These are um, two shots from Some Kind of Wonderful um, that mimic famous shots from Sixteen Candles and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And so this is a shot from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Ferris in the Shower, and this is a shot from um, Some Kind of Wonderful. And then here is a shot shot from a scene in 16 Candles in 1984 that um, really looks so much like this shot from Some Kind of Wonderful in 1987. Okay, so one thing about John Hughes is that he loved the Beatles. And there's this quote from him that says that he listened to the Beatles' White Album for more than 16 years and that when he was filming Ferris Bueller, he listened to the album every single day for 56 days. So you can bet that definitely influenced Ferris Bueller's Day Off. And here's this um, quote from Ferris Bueller down here at the bottom saying, I quote John Lennon, I don't believe in Beatles, I just believe in me. And um, Beatles music actually popped up a few times um, throughout his movies. Twist and Shout was played in Ferris Bueller. Woman, which is actually about John, Lin John Lennon, that showed up in Pretty in Pink, and Hey Jude was in 16 Candles. So what was special about John Hughes was that he really loved teenagers and children, and he took them very seriously. He, um, he never looked down on them and their problems and what they were going through, and it kind of made him special for the time. And... I think oh, that, you know, that kind of stemmed from the fact that he had his own fear of growing up and becoming like a traditional boring adult. And, you know, that was one of the recurring themes from earlier that pops up over and over throughout his films. And I think that came straight from himself. And, um, and that's why he made all these movies about teenagers over and over again. And, um, he also just really liked them. He says, he's, there's a quote here saying, I don't think of kids as a lower form of the human species. And then there's another quote saying, um, teenagers aren't taken as seriously as we were. You make a teenage movie and critics say, how dare you? There's just a general lack of respect for young people now. And, and this was true. I mean, back in the 1980s, you were in like the height of the satanic panic and Teenagers were, were being very scrutinized for the things that they did, you know, the music that they listened to, the clothes that they wore, um, they were just kind of thought as um, awful <laughs> or they were lost or, you know, or, um, you know, they were kind of looked down on and, and that was reflected in the movies at the time too. Um, they were portrayed in a negative light or, or they were made fun of, but Hughes kind of changed the game with his films and um, he kind of portrayed teenagers in this optimistic tone and he took their problems seriously. But 
he also had some problems with the ways that he would portray women and minorities. He grew up in really white suburbia, and that came through in his films. You can definitely tell that almost every single one of his films were set in the suburbs of Chicago, and there's almost no minorities at all. Maybe one per film, maybe. And, you know, if they did show up, they would be the comic relief. And one bad, bad example of this is Long Duck Dong in 16 Candles. He was an offensive Asian stereotype. He had really exaggerated broken English and he was just made fun of constantly. He was the butt of so many jokes and you were supposed to think that this is a really dumb, stupid character and you were supposed to laugh at him. And one of the reasons that you're laughing at him is that he's supposed to be this stupid Asian character. And it was just, it was a really, really awful character. And that racism, you could call it subtle, but it really wasn't. I mean, it likely came just straight from Hughes and, and his upbringing. And he had no um, main characters that were minorities. Sexism was also really prevalent throughout his movies. Um, in 16 Candles, the main love interest gave his unconscious girlfriend, who had passed out, away to a geek or some random guy for the night, who then took some pictures of her as proof that they had hooked up and um, showed them off to a bunch of guys. And this was not looked down on in the movie. You were supposed to laugh at this. This was supposed to be funny. And this would just completely not fly in um, 2021. Like you would never be able to get away with that scene. But that was supposed to be funny. And in The Breakfast Club, Bender sexually harassed Claire. And he, and it really bothered her. And I think it made her tear up once. And she was telling him to stop, but he kept going and bothering her. And um, they ended up together as love interests at the end of the film. So that's pretty messed up. Oh, and Molly Ringwald, um, she wrote an article about um, John Hughes and his sexism at the height of the Me Too movement um, a few years back. And that was a pretty interesting article where she kind of laid out some of the problems with his movies and their um, how they depicted women and the sexism throughout them. So John Hughes had some very clear recurring themes throughout his movies, you know, teenage angst was one of the major ones. Rebellion was another. And he had some distinctive stylistic traits with the main one being that um, magical realism that, and that would tell you if you're watching a John Hughes movie or not. And then he had some repetitive techniques like um, that close up of the character's eyes locking and montages all throughout his movies. And um, he was also really special for, you know, creating teenage films that took teenagers seriously at a time when teenage problems were kind of looked down on and teenagers were being very scrutinized. But his films probably wouldn't hold up now in um, 2021 because of their lack of minorities, their racial stereotyping, and um, rampant sexism throughout them. But, you know, despite his flaws, Hughes, he did, did a lot for the teen genre, and he got a hand in that. Okay, so that's all. If you have any questions, you can email me. And um, here are my sources that I used for this project. Thank you so much for watching.